Well, happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our Friday Five Live conversation. And if you have any questions during the session, you can just use the chat feature. And if you're comfortable sharing your messages with everybody, please select all panelists and attendees in the chat box or everyone when you submit your, com your comments. And everybody will have access to the recording next week. If you're a GoToKnowledge member, you will find this recording on your dashboard. Otherwise, we will email it to you. And our host for our podcast today is Meg Foster. Meg has spent 20 years in higher education focused on student success initiatives and working in areas such as orientation, faculty development, online learning, student leadership, and first year initiatives. And Meg, I will pass it over to you now. Oh, thank you so much, Melissa. Well, good morning for many of you. Good afternoon for several of us. Um, we are really delighted um, and, and just honored today um, to have with us students from literally coast to coast. Um, to, to talk with us about um, the fall semester, what, what last year was like um, for them um, and what they're hoping and thinking about um, for the fall semester. And um, just quickly wanna let y'all know that what we've got upcoming for our next two Friday Five Lives, the 27th, uh, we're gonna be talking about um, how we can get students um, to use uh, our support resources on campus. I know all these students are the kinds of uh, folks who always use the resources available to them. Um, but uh, what we wanna make sure that we're getting students connected with those resources. I know we've been talking in our previous podcast about concern regarding student learning loss and support, the additional support they're gonna need this um, coming semester. And then September 10th, we've got the team joining us. They were just highlighted in the Chronicle of Higher Ed last week um, regarding uh, at the University of Wisconsin, um, Milwaukee, talking with us about their trauma-informed approach um, to, their, to their start of their academic year. And I'm just really excited to learn from them. Um, I think what they're doing is really important work. Um, and I hope that uh, they'll give us um, some models that we can implement at our own institutions. Um, as a friendly reminder, if you have any questions for our panelists or um, comments or want to introduce yourself, feel free to use the chat function to do so. Um, just make sure you put everyone or all panelists and attendees so we can all read those comments. Um, and I will weave your questions um, into our discussion um, today. So we are really fortunate to have with us um, a number of students um, and joining us um, from really across the United States. And so I wanted to start um, with having them each introduce themselves. Uh, depending on your sound quality, you may need to like unmute, mute. Sometimes, you know, Zoom can, can do things um, that, are, that are strange, but we'll just go in alphabetical order. Um, so we're gonna have our panelists tell us where they're from, um, where they're attending school, um, what they're studying, um, at their institution, and then we'll get into the meat of our discussion. So, Ashab, not to pick on you, but we'll have you go first. Yep, not a problem. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashab Alungar, and I'm currently live from Dhaka, Bangladesh, and I'm currently studying at PVCC. And it's my second year, and I'm, I'm doing my associates on computer science. Nice meeting you all. Thank you, Ashab, for joining us. Goodness gracious, what time is it there? It's actually, I think it's 12 p.m. 12 p.m., yeah, or 10, 10 p.m., yeah. I've looked at the time recently. Well, thank you. I didn't Not realize you were logging in from so, so far away. That is awesome. Thank you and welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, we're so glad to have you here with us. Um, Natalie, Noel, we'll let you all decide who gets to go first. I can start. Um, my name's Natalie. Uh, I'm Zooming from Carlsbad, California. Um, I'm currently a sophomore at Pepperdine and I'm studying English writing and rhetoric. Um, and yeah, that's it. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Natalie. Thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, no one else shares the same last name for a good reason. They are sisters, um, but we'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Noelle. Uh, yes, I am Natalie's twin sister. I also go to Pepperdine University. Uh, I'm a rising sophomore and I'm studying sustainability. Um, I'm currently Zooming from Carlsbad as well. Uh, actually in the same house as Natalie. <laughs> well, it's nice that you would be in the same house. Um, yeah. 
Love it. Awesome. Um, I don't know if Devin's been able to hop on yet. I don't think so. Um, Devin is a, a rising senior at uh, West Virginia University, where she's also a section leader in their marching band. Um, so she is going to jump in um, as she was rushing back from band camp. So she's hopping on now. So we'll um, skip and let Kevin introduce him. I'm okay. Um, so I'm Kevin, and I'm currently in Oak Park, Illinois, which is a Chicago suburb. Um, and I'm a junior at the University of Washington studying math and uh, computer related things. <laughs> Amazing. We're, we're all very impressed by math and computer, um, especially this history major here. Um, fantastic. Drake, you want to come next? Uh, so I'm Drake. I'm from Virginia Beach. Um, I'll be a uh, I'll be a freshman at Wake Forest. Um, I guess this year. Um, and I'm looking at studying biology right now. Welcome, welcome. And Devin, I think I saw you hop on. Yes, I did. Hi. Um, so I, sorry, I am, um, my name is Devin Firash. I am going to be a senior at West Virginia University this year. Um, and I'm also in the marching band, which is where I just came from rehearsal. Um, so I apologize. I'm going to hop on my computer in just a few minutes when I get home. So well, we're glad you're with us. And um, just to tell one more thing about Devin, she's also um, uh, a resident assistant um, at West Virginia. So this will be her second year um, as an RA. I think it was quite an adventure to be an RA uh, first year in the midst of COVID um, in a freshman residence hall. So um, as always on our Friday Five Lives, we have, um, I've got some questions planned, but we'd love to hear, you know, insights. Um, if there are things I wasn't smart enough to ask guys, feel free to, um, to think outside of these questions. And also if our um, listening audience wants to um, uh, pose any of their own questions, feel free to use the chat to do so. So um, we just kind of love, I mean, I think we were all in really different places not only, you know, physically, um, but um, very different experiences um, for our last academic year. And so I was just curious about kind of what you experienced last academic year. Were you face-to-face um, -face in class? Did you spend one semester online, two semesters online? Just how did that work for you? Um, and anyone can take any of these questions. So just unmute and hop on. So my school year was actually very interesting because um, before the whole pandemic and hybrid classes started, I was actually at Penn State and then I transferred to uh, PBCC because uh, during my time, I felt like what I was doing in life before the whole COVID scenario was I was sort of listening and sort of um, living life as it's going with no ambition, with no aim in life. So I decided that from now on, after my reflection during COVID and then I think temporarily the universities and all of it was off and they extended the holidays. And that's when I really decided to, to take control of my life and really see where I want to take it. So mm -hmm. I decided to go to PBCC and I joined and I, and I, I met Ms. Ms. Um, Kate, uh, Ms. Ms. and then she helped me really um, submerge myself within the PBCC community. And I promised myself that from now on, I would, uh, I'd like to be more bold and be a bigger part of the community as I was before. So I went in, I joined the SGA and I became, I got elected as vice president. And along my first year, I met Meg and we started the Panther Five. And I made sure that I was more involved in the community as a whole and really contributing and hopefully shaping of how I envisioned PVCC and how I would like PVCC to grow. I love that. So thanks for sharing. So I didn't realize Ashab, that part of your story was having started off at this four year university. Um, that you've been, um, transferred to um, community uh, college in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, and Ashab is very involved in um, uh, school leadership um, and has also um, helped us create um, kind of a student success podcast um, called the Panther 10, because it's only 10 minutes. We know people don't have time to listen to a lot um, and we need to get going with our second season on that. Anybody else, what were you up to um, this past academic year? Um, I'm going to pick, if it's okay, Kevin, um, it seemed like you had kind of an interesting experience this past um, academic year. 
So yeah, we'll absolutely. Um, so definitely this past year. So like um, I mentioned in the beginning, um, this past 2020, 2021 school year was my first time being a resident assistant in dorms. Um, so that, I mean, it was an experience within itself that I was new to and very excited for, but um, it was also just weird because everybody was relearning the role of being an RA because of the fact that we were in a pandemic and now we had to um, guide students on not only, you know, the rules of dorms, but also the rules of COVID and the guidelines that were in place. So I think it was definitely difficult for everyone to just adapt in that way. Um, I also unfortunately was um, completely online and completely asynchronous both semesters um, mm -hmm. this past year, um, which was not ideal for me whatsoever. I am far more of an in-person learner. Um, I definitely like to be in person and meet, meet people and ask questions and just be present instead of you know, staring at a screen and doing a discussion board with people that I don't even know. So I they lost Devin for a second. And thankfully, um, I have more in person and um, actual synchronous classes this year. So I'm very, very excited for that. Good. That's awesome. I, I know that was a really hard adjustment for a lot of us, um, that expectation that we're accustomed to learning more in person. Um, and then making that big adjustment um, can be kind of isolating. And um, so Kevin, I know it's a little confusing. I didn't think about Devin, Kevin, um, and I'll make sure I print my, I try to um, articulate that more clearly. Kevin would love to hear from you about your UW experience because it was a different one um, this past year. Uh, yeah, so first quarter of college I took off um, last year mainly because I thought there was a chance that pandemic could last a really, really long time. Like I didn't think vaccines would be available when they were. Um, and then there was also like, I was seriously considering transferring um, like back in state. Um, that didn't end up happening. Uh, what did end up happening is um, for the remaining half of the year, um, I went to this like remote learning community in Arizona um, where there were basically 60 of us college students from around the country. Um, and we bas they basically, um, the group that ran this, um, A Place Beyond, they converted like a summer camp for kids or like an outdoor education camp basically into yeah. like a makeshift college campus. And then they basically uh, tested all of us and then like quarantined the entire campus that just like prevented people from going in and out um and so that way you know we were able to do um more things than we otherwise would be able to um so it's definitely interesting i mean we were in like really close quarters in the mountains with like 59 strangers for a long time um which sometimes was um cool and sometimes not that cool um, it was hard to avoid like any sort of drama that happened to anyone because you were like in it. Um, but I definitely think it gave me like the motivation and stuff that I was kind of lacking from um, like, you know, not being in person that'll hopefully help me a lot next year. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. I can imagine that it sort of sounds like um, college and a reality TV series all sort of um, a little bit um, mixed in. So you were taking classes while you were at this location in Arizona remotely, um, but just, is that correct? Like yes. doing your college yeah. coursework? Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Wow, so lots of, that's very different. Um, then Devin, who's living in a residence hall, um, taking care of uh, first year students and Ashab, who's taking classes online at Penn State and then at PVCC and um, Noel, Natalie, anything you want to share about kind of your experience? What, what happened last year? Um, yeah, our ex oh, sorry, Natalie. Um, our experience was um, similar. We were both uh, remote and at home, so we didn't get to move on campus. Uh, for our freshman year. So that was mm -hmm. really interesting for us, expecting to like, um, you know, like start college in a resident hall and like do all that sort of um, like typical freshman experience. Uh, but yeah, so we were online and um, 
it was actually really interesting. I think we both ended up having like a really fulfilling experience with it. Um, even though, you know, things were remote, I felt like Pepperdine was doing a really good job of like creating community out of like the situation we had. And um, we were able to move on campus for the last seven weeks of our semester. So just for like that amount of time, we were able to like live in a dorm and um, I wasn't able to do an in-person class, but my sister was, so I'm sure she'll tell you about that. Yeah, thanks, Paula. Yeah, so there were just a few classes offered um, in person, depending on people's availabilities, because um, we residence hall capacity wasn't increased when in-person classes opened, so a lot of people um, were not able to um, move to Pepperdine. You had to appeal and fill out um, a special request to live on campus, so there are only about 200 people. So that was a really interesting experience because um, <clears throat> it was just a small portion of the normal student body living on campus. And um, my in-person class, about five people came to, the rest were on Zoom. Um, but I, I'm still so glad that we got to go, even if it was just for a little bit. But you all will move on campus, right, next week, it sounds like, or um, and, and they're anticipating um, so will your classes, kind of a nice segue to our next question. Um, so for our Pepperdine students, are your classes predominantly going to be face-to-face? -face? Are you going to be online? Is it going to be a little bit of a mixture? I'd be curious yeah. to hear. Yeah, so as of right now, all of our, every class at Pepperdine is supposed to be in-person, um, not online or asynchronous at all. Um, and as of now, also, everyone is supposed to be able to move in. There are um, sophomores that are studying abroad at various um, international programs as well. Our, Noelle and I were supposed to be studying in Buenos Aires, Argentina um, for the fall and the spring. Um, our fall program got canceled due to COVID, but um, there are still European programs that are planning to run. Everything is supposed to go forward. Um, my largest class is only, I think, 17 people. So I'm thinking that it can probably stay that way. There are some larger lectures that might be online given the circumstances, but we'll see. And is Pepperdine requiring vaccinations or masking or I'm just curious what? Yes, vaccines are required um, unless you fill out like a special exemption and then um, masks are required uh, in indoors as like LA County that's their guidance right now is that masks are required indoors and um, they're not required outdoors at the moment. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else want to, Drake, what about you? Since you're our freshman student, sorry to put you on the spot. Tell us, when do you move on? Do you have like on in-person orientation? What's Wake Forest doing? Um, yeah, so we'll move in um, the 18th and 19th uh, next week. And then, uh, they've over the past like two weeks gotten more and more strict about uh COVID and all that um before uh actually yesterday they came out with the we have to wear masks indoors uh they didn't have that before um and like I, I don't think our parents are uh like allowed to help us with move in too much uh just to minimize COVID and stuff um it's more of a drop and go and then we kind of move in ourselves um but I know that uh, like school-wise, most things should be going on. Uh, we have about five days before classes start um, that they're doing things. Um, it's called like New Deke Week. So we'll be meeting with um, student advisors, um, lower division advisors, um, which are faculty members assigned to us to advise us until we declare a major. Um, and then everything else should be going on. I think, um, I think all of my classes are in person. And I've talked with a couple of students who I think are doing the like global awakenings program, which is where you'll spend your first year abroad. Um, I think they're doing that in uh, Copenhagen. I think that's the program. So I think most things are still still going on, but just more precautions, masks, and uh, they haven't closed down any sports yet. So I guess we'll see how that goes too. Great. It is fun to get to go to those football games. So, and things like that. Hard. So in, um, anybody else uh, want to share kind of what their fall plans are? Yeah, um, so at PV, 
Yes, yeah, so at PBCC currently, um, we are having in-person classes as well, but we also, I believe, have the option for a few online classes. And in terms of the policy there, is that uh, we are required to wear masks right now for outdoor events and indoor, as COVID cases have risen over the past um, couple of weeks and new variant is out. But nevertheless, we are excited. Um, we just had our SG elections done before, um, before last semester ended. And um, I did get elected as president and we do have a team now. And we have, and our team has actually um, spent their summer, a lot of the time planning for upcoming academic year. And um, we are super excited with what's to come because we are hosting the Welcome Back Social where we will be having freshmen um, enjoying and really seeing and immersing themselves into the PBCC experience and what is what student life is like. And hopefully we can come forward and help the community in other ways. It's, it's good. Uh, the, the national kind of research right now is showing us that college students really missed the community last year, that that was, yeah. you know, as, as, as great a job as institutions tried to do to replicate that virtually, um, you know, the students just are really ready to um, be able to be involved in clubs and organizations again and um, take on those leadership roles and um, yeah. all those kinds of things. Um, anybody else want to share with us? Kevin? Um, yeah, uh, I was going to come at this question from like more of a personal angle. So mm -hmm. one of the big changes for me last school year is um, I got put in charge of like one of these, uh, like a, a club on campus. Um, by put in charge, I mean, I didn't really expect to be in charge, um, but it kind of kind of just happened that way. Um, the club is uh, quizable which could maybe best be described as um, standardized team trivia. Um, so during the, um, during the pandemic, we actually were able to triple the size of our club. Um, but that means like most of the people in the club have like never actually, I mean, I've never met them and they've like not been to the club before. Um, and it'll be interesting to, both like manage this new influx of members and figure out how we're going to run operations um, like, you know, post pandemic. Uh, one, one thing we were doing is um, we were thinking about how we could do things outside. You know, there's probably going to be less people wanting to do things inside. So um, mm -hmm. me and my dad have been making like this, uh, this buzzer system, like works outside, hoping like, you know, maybe it can, attract some attention oh actually i actually have it over here you can like oh, cool. show it to you guys if you want uh, these are the kinds of things cool engineering focused math computer whoa all right so uh this is like the thing um where's the button okay this is the button and you like click it <laughs> And it lights up and makes a sound. Awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, so hopefully be this will be compete. good for some promo. Get yeah. some new people in our club. <laughs> and you were sharing with us, Kevin, that you moved back out to to UW like September, early September. It sounds like, mm -hmm. um, and your classes start kind of mid to late September. Yeah. And and um, right now. Have, has because it's such uh, so you've got another like five or so weeks is the institution made any decisions regarding masking or vaccination that you've heard about um the the school is requiring vaccination um i don't believe you actually have to send like proof you kind of just have to be like i got the vaccine mm -hmm. <laughs> um but um i guess i'm not too worried about it just because seattle has like a very high vaccination rate, mm -hmm. um, like uh, compared to other cities. Um, and also, um, maybe this is not the right way to think about it, but Washington State's kind of in like a surge right now. So maybe by the time we get there, like there's it's right. not, we're not in the surge, <laughs> like, I don't know, or, or it could be bigger. I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> I, I think a lot with September school start dates are kind of like, oh, well, maybe it'll be over if I the Delta thing will be on the decline. Devin, what about you? Um, you're gonna be, it sounded like sort of in person 
mostly this yeah. year. Yeah, so for this year, um, we are, um, at WVU, we're back full-fledged everything, um, which is exciting, but um, unfortunately they are not requiring vaccines as um, a lot of, I know other schools, and especially Virginia schools have, um, which does make me nervous. Um, just being back, you know, in like what we call the cesspool of, um, you know, dorms with all these freshmen and friends and coming over and all this stuff uh, does make me nervous. So not requiring vaccines, they're not requiring masks inside, which um, I think Ashab, as you mentioned, um, for SGA, I am also, I'm a college senator um, on uh, a ticket uh, for SGA at WVU. And um, we've been trying to discuss, you know, how we're starting the year, you know, should we recommend or bring it to you know our president about mandating masks and about just sort of starting it off with you need to wear a mask inside if we're going to be 100% classes 100% everything um, starting it out that way instead of saying okay you can start the school year don't need anything and then all of a sudden we have a surge because everybody comes back and everybody goes out and then we have to implement it later on down the road when nobody would be even willing to do it so mm -hmm. We're try trying to feel that out, um, so it's a little frustrating, but um, as excited as I am to get started, I, I am definitely nervous. Um, during RA training last week, we um, it was Monday, we had had our first full day of training and it had been in person, and we all got emails Monday night saying we had all come in contact with someone who tested positive, and if you're vaccinated, didn't need to quarantine, but um, you had to get tested at the end of the week, so all of our RA training already went online after a single day. So I kind of looked at it as, oh my gosh, if that happened, you know, just a day later during just training when maybe 40, 60 of us are here, I can't imagine what it's going to be like when all, you know, hundreds of kids show up this weekend. So I am nervous. Right. <laughs> and at West Virginia last year, if I remember correctly, Devin, um, when you, when, when students had to quarantine, they had to quarantine in their rooms, correct? There wasn't like yes. the separate quarantine dorm. Um, yeah, so just, um, just like contact tracing, um, sort of, you know, um, contact was um, quarantining in your room. So, you know, for two weeks, you'd get meals delivered to you. And um, I, I think, I don't remember the day period it was, and maybe 10 days after you get tested. And then if you, even if you tested negative, you had to finish out your 14 days, which was not fun, but um, had to do it. And if you were actually positive, they had a separate dorm plate, like dorm downtown um, that they would send you to. And um, you would stay your 14 days there and be tested and taken care of. But um, it, it was strange. Definitely last year, um, again, during RA training, I unfortunately came into contact with someone who tested positive and spent two weeks in my room getting meals delivered and I was not allowed to go outside. I could, I could only leave my room to go to the bathroom and that was it. So it, it was painful and I do not want to do that again, ever. <laughs> yeah. And Devin, I think your comments really are a nice transition into, you know, I, I think our audience, I'd love to know from you all kind of the two things about what are you concerned about? I mean, and you shared Devin, I think very nicely, hey, you know, <laughs> day one, we've already had this experience of coming together and then um, uh, having to, to um, get tested and those sorts of things. Um, but what are you excited about for the fall? Like, what are you like, yes, you know, I, I really want to have this experience. I mean, three of you have never, well, Drake is brand new to the college experience. Noel and Natalie spent, you know, seven weeks living on a college campus. So like to spend a whole semester. Wow. Yay. Um, you know, that's exciting. So what are you looking forward to, but also what are you concerned about? Noel, you're not in your head, so I'm going to pick on you. Yeah. Um, I think just to start with the things that I'm a little concerned about, um, most of Pepperdine classes are pretty small. So like that is great that we're able to have them in person. And, um, like if the LA guidelines change, I feel like it's pretty likely that we'll still have that great in-person experience. But I do have a few very large lecture classes <clears throat> that like at the moment are expected to be delivered in person, but I could see that like changing very rapidly. So I guess I'm a little bit afraid that things will kind of change quickly and um, that like as guidelines change that like I'll be kind of like thrown out of whack and like forced into weird situations and Pepperdine doesn't seem to have a great um, 
we're really overrun with students this year. Pepperdine over enrolled their um, freshman class. And so there's like a huge housing crisis. I'm afraid that LA like will decide that our, our dorm setup is like not, not okay given like the COVID standards. And so there's a little bit of uncertainty there, but I'm really looking forward to just being on campus, even if I have to like take those challenges as they come and join clubs, like actually meet my professors in person and um, be a part of the surf team and just like have roommates and um, just kind of begin to really feel part of the Pepperdine community. As much as I felt like a Pepperdine student last semester, I think I'll really feel like I belong there next semester. So yeah, I guess there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I, I really appreciate that you brought up kind of this concern that there's going to be just this uncertainty, right? Like what, what's, how is it actually going to unfold? Um, and, and the reality is that not, none of, I mean, none of us know that, not even, not even our administrative teams, right, who are spending, I know, all kinds of time planning out, like, well, if A, then B, if C, then K, um, you know, happens. So, yeah, I think that uncertainty is, it's wearing. It can be kind of emotionally exhausting for sure. Um, anyone else want to share kind of their, what they're looking forward to, but also maybe what their concerns are? Um, yeah, so um, if I would, I'd like to go over the concerns really quickly. So I do agree with Devin in terms of um, should we enforce vaccinations and what steps should the SGA take in order to ensure the safety of our students. And although I do understand that there is a do dilemma right now is that does enforcing vaccination, does it go against the First Amendment? And I do believe there are many discussions over should we do this or should we not? Well, I do understand this is a gray area. But I do think that um, us together, we can put up a united front and we can combat vaccine misinformation. And I think this has been one of the major reasons why many of the students or many people in general have decided to not take vaccines. And I think um, if we put a united um, effort with the school administration and other colleges and other personnel, we can definitely provide the right information to our students and help make them make a better decision in terms of whether they, they want to stay protected from the virus or not. And I believe the other concern which I had was completely ditching the hybrid model, because um, I do think it really helped me out, especially the cloud recordings on Zoom. So I could always go back and look at some classes where it felt like I might have missed something, and it has really helped me practice. But I am looking forward to meet my professors and the other students in person. So I do hope we can somewhat keep a hybrid model in the future. And um, many, many people have argued that this whole um, time frame has sort of accelerated what education will look like in the future. And exactly. hopefully we can use this opportunity to adapt our educational principles and how um, we teach other students as everyone has different ways of knowing and learning. Mm -hmm. Really interesting um, points. And, and I think, Ishab, I think it's great that you and Devin are really thinking about how in your leadership roles at your institutions that, that students, I mean, you have a voice, right? Um, and if there are things you're concerned about, then it's a very appropriate to use that voice, you know, within the structure of our organizations. Um, and I always want to say and follow policy, um, but, you know, to, to share those concerns with administration. Um, and, and I think that's really important. That's a great way to impact um, change on campuses. So, um, but I think it's intriguing your, your desire not to leave that hybrid model totally behind. Um, and, and, you know, you're absolutely totally spot on. I think we all feel that there's going to be this enormous, that we are seeing an enormous shift in, in how education will work. Um, moving forward that, I mean, COVID has impacted us in ways we are just beginning to understand um, in, in the education sector. And so really intriguing um, that, that concern that, uh, and I think a lot of us feel this way too. And Noel, maybe this kind of speaks to your uncertainty. You know, when we had hybrid models, we knew that if something happens, right, if I get sick, I still am able to access course material. Um, and if we totally shift away from that, what happens if I've got a quarantine, right? What happens if I'm Devin and I'm in a meeting and I'm exposed and once again, um, you know, I'm back in, in my residence hall room. So um, really important um, points you've brought up, Ashab, thank you. Um, anyone else wanna share with us 
excitement about the fall or the concerns that you might have? Um, I guess I kind of have like a different uh, perspective as to what I'm concerned about. Um, like with COVID and everything, uh, just kind of the assimilation into campus. Like if COVID gets worse and restrictions get tighter, um, like I'm a little bit worried about how uh, kind of the gelling of kind of the community there um, uh, as kind of like what uh, Noel and Natalie went through their first year, um, just not necessarily being, you know, super connected to the community because you'd either be stuck in your room or kind of um, different areas uh, because of like COVID quarantining or other reasons if a lot of things get shut down. Um, and I, that's kind of exasperated by, you know, Wake Forest is very much distant from like Winston-Salem. Like it's, uh, I don't know if any of you have been there, but it's, uh, you know, like kind of a gated community. There are like three roads into it. You can't really walk into it. Um, so it's very much like isolated. And if you then like essentially become isolated on campus, I feel like it'd be kind of scary if that happened. Um, so that's just one of the concerns kind of surrounding my first year. And I think a lot of probably freshmen have that as well. Mm -hmm. and, and Jake, that's interesting that you bring that up. This week, I got to uh, listen in on um, a webinar around student mental health, and it was talking about um, that loneliness is the most pressing um, like concern that students express um, in, in mental health surveys. Um, and certainly, if you're isolated, that's going to definitely um, really exacerbate those feelings of loneliness. Um, Winston-Salem, you're right, it is kind of out of um, we, we lived there for several years, so uh, it's a beautiful campus, um, but I, I, can, I can sense that um, the feeling of, ooh, am I going to go and kind of be stuck here in this place where I'm going to be um, very alone? Um, and it was interesting in this talk, they were also talk, talking about um, students expressing um, concern around making friends and, and you know, that there's this sort of anticipation that we go off to college and we just are there and then it's like, you know, add a soda and your instant friendship, right? Um, you just rolled in day one and they're all your best friends waiting for you with signs. I'm gonna be your new best friend. Um, and that, that isn't always the case. And so, um, you know, how to help coach students um, through those things. So um, Drake, thank you for sharing that. I think uh, what you said really resonates with um, what a lot of us professionally are, are seeing and hearing. And that's important um, that we hear that. Um, anybody else a concern for the fall semester or something they're looking forward to? And if not, then let's um, transition to kind of our last question. We know you've got folks listening in who are in all different aspects of higher education. Um, and the number one reason why we do the jobs we do is because we really care deeply about college students and um, your success. And so, as we're entering this year of, I think Noel um, used a really important word, uncertainty, this year of uncertainty. We've talked a lot about this year being kind of a bridge between pandemic learning and whatever comes next. Um, what do you, what would you like your, your advisors, uh, your staff, your faculty, like to know about um, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, or what your friends are thinking and feeling and talking about? Um, I think that, it might be sort of tempting to um, sort of have an idea of like this unified COVID experience, you know, like mm -hmm. people went, went home, they did Zoom classes and, and, and it sucked. Um, but like, I think that it's important to recognize that like people had very different experiences during this time. Like some people I think, you know, actually enjoyed you know, online learning, I think a lot of people would find that hard to believe, but I know there are definitely some people who, for them, it was a good thing. Um, whereas, you know, other people had it like really bad. Um, and I don't think it would be fair to say that, you know, everyone had the same experience during this time or even a similar one. Um, and then some more minor thing, I would hope that um, I don't have to write a like, how did COVID impact you essay in like every single class next year? I think I would probably go insane. <laughs> but that's, that's a really great, I mean, you bring up incredibly important points. One, you know, every student has had a unique experience too this, this year. Um, 
And, and that runs the gamut, right? Um, in my teaching life at Piedmont, I teach students who don't even have really reliable internet access, right? So, or who don't have access to, to you know, consistent food source. I mean, so we go from that to, um, you know, my own um, child's experience of needing mental health support um, this past year. So when we're thinking about all, when we're working with students, remembering there isn't a common experience, right? Um, that we've had this year. But then Kevin, you ask a great question because I, I want to get to know my new students. So I should not ask them the question about, tell me what your COVID experience was like. Maybe I should frame the question as how can I support you moving into this year, given the last year? Yeah, I mean, I just think there's like a very real chance that like every class is gonna have like, you know, multiple of iterations of like that you know, prompt and it's just going right. to get kind of like exhausting, you know, like how many times you want to have to explain what, what happened to you during right. COVID and why it was bad. <laughs> right. right. Um, I'm also thinking about all the poor college admissions counselors who, you know, you all have gone, you've applied to college and been accepted, but remember all those essays? Don't you know that they are going to see an influx of what my life was like, you know, during COVID or something like that. And they're all going to be like, no, 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 I don't want to read another one of those. So um, it can go both ways. Kevin, great, great advice um, and recommendations for us. Anyone else um, want to share kind of what they wish your higher ed staff and faculty knew? I think um, in terms of the faculty, one thing that I would really urge most colleges to consider is probably looking to expand on counselors because I think many students might need mental support to just to readjust to daily life and just like need a smooth transition over so I think giving people that personal space and that personal um, time to help reorganize their lives and help getting them adjusted would be a crucial step for all colleges and, and community colleges alike. Yes absolutely all colleges thank you Sean. community colleges and for your institutions. Um, and I know that um, survey after survey, that's the number one concern faculty, um, college presidents have for this year is, is student mental health, um, but making sure we have the resources um, to back that up. Anyone else, what we wish that your faculty staff know as we move into this fall semester or fall term? Oh, oh I would, oops, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that um, kind of similar to what's already been said, but like, I liked what you said at the beginning that we were not going to like walk into life and just have it be normal the way it was. I think a lot of us mm -hmm. want this fall semester to be like a refresh, like a, a fresh start. Um, mm -hmm. kind of, because I think a lot of us anticipated the pandemic ending by this time. I certainly did. I thought I was going to be studying abroad in Argentina and um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought that nothing would be able to touch that. Um, but it's true that we're still living in this time. And like, it's not going to be like Kevin was saying, like everyone had a different experience during COVID. And so I think to just make sure that faculty um, and education staff are realizing that we're still in this in-between state where everyone's coming from different places and I don't know, I think there's risks like at Pepperdine, for example, I feel like there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about um, alternate planning. Like it kind of just seems like they're full force, like in person, um, everything's normal. Like we're going back to normal, but like we're never probably gonna go back to the way we were before. And I feel like it's important to like remind myself that this isn't gonna be like, I'm done with freshman year, I'm now sophomore. Like it's not like we're going back in time and like it's gonna be this like, um, college experience that like I once thought I'd have so I think for everyone to kind of just remember mm -hmm. that like we're still like operating in this like gray zone where we're kind of like between we're trans in a transition stage still so yeah yeah, yeah I think that's a really really important because I'm seeing a lot and hearing a lot from folks who are talking about you know institutions being like all right well let's go back to normal um, but that if we don't spend time acknowledging that we've had this enormous change um, that's really not a healthy thing for any of us. Um, and like you, we're all, we, none of us can remember like 
oh, you know, was, was my kid in the third grade last year or the second grade? I don't remember, right? Um, and some people keep talking about, we need a redo year. We had a, one more voice I know that wanted to share. Um, Devin, was that you? You get our final word here. Thank you. Yes, that was me. Um, yes, I think definitely going off Natalie, that's exactly what I was going for. It was just um, for the way we are doing it, um, coming in full fledged, everything, no vaccination mass requirements, nothing, no boundaries set. Um, I have not heard a single backup plan of, oh my gosh, are they, God forbid, they send people home. Um, are they doing hybrid? Are they going to um, put people online for two weeks if we have a surge and then try to go back in person? So they're Right now, there's no backup plans. It is just full on everything goes um, and we'll go from there, um, which I know pray works out, but um, I'm really not sure how to go. So I just definitely will just ask of professors and faculty, staff, everyone um, be patient and communicate and just uh, listen, like mental health is real, being overwhelmed and being in a pandemic in college, it's, uh, unheard of. It's unprecedented times. It's definitely something new that none of us have experienced and not that I wish it upon anyone, but it's kind of like, why us really like now during college, but um, it's, it's a time. So hopefully everybody gets through it and everybody gets to have a year. Yeah. And I think you, you, Devin, um, are, are kind of wrapping us up with a really, really important term um, in, in concept. And it's this idea of communication. And we've talked about this all year on this podcast, that if our students do not understand what's going on, we are not doing our jobs right. So um, students need the reassurance that, you know, you don't need the details of what the backup plan is, but don't worry, guys. We got a backup plan, you know, we, we did last year. Um, we just wanna reassure you, we're doing all these things for mitigation. I mean, I think students need this reassurance from what um, I'm hearing from you all, um, cause it is an overwhelming year and as Noel used that really good term um, that's full of uncertainty. So, well, we have hit 1245 East um, Coast time. Um, so I wanted to make sure that um, I, uh, stick to um, our time. We've had some lovely comments in the chat. Um, our, our listeners just really appreciate everything um, that, that you're sharing with us um, and um, wish you all a, a wonderful start um, to your fall term. Uh, safe moving in for those of you who are moving in um, uh, to campus and, and just a safe and healthy start to the year. Um, if um, folks do have um questions, you know, feel free to chat them and we'll get them out to um, our panelists. I want to just say from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much. Um, this has been really insightful. I've taken pages of notes um, that I'm going to share um, uh, with my own students as I remember, you know, as I began working with them here in another um, week or so, um, but also share with um, admin teams um, as we work towards our, our fall start. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I wish everybody all the best um, as we wrap up the summer um, and turn our sights to this new academic year. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, Meg. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to our listening audience.